SpaceX Starlink satellites plummet 200 kilometers. Why? That's a good question. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we're coming to the end, sadly, to some fireside. That smokiness, so good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink's satellites plummeting 200 kilometers. Well, they're not really falling out of the sky 200 kilometers, but they're going to be placed 200 kilometers lower if the FCC allows them to do so. So I wanna talk a little bit about this. What are the ramifications for this? PC Magazine had a little article on this. I wanna read some of that to you first, and then I wanna dive in, dig in a little bit deeper, do some mathematics, some calculus, <laughs> and uh, give you some of my thoughts on it, how this is going to help us, or anyone that has Starlink or that will be getting Starlink in the future. So before we dive in, of course, there's some housekeeping to do. If you enjoy the video, even the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not. If you are, thank you very much. Don't forget to click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. It should be live tonight, so join me. Also, if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down here. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better if you want more Starlink content like this. I have over 250 videos just for you. Check them out. Maybe I'll put a link over here when you're done watching this video. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, they are free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN, the nice folks over there at Pure VPN gave us a promo code, which is jchristina. Use that and you'll get 15 additional percent off at checkout. Once again, thank you over there at Pure VPN. Those guys are awesome. So let's jump right into this article. It says the company is requesting to orbit some second generation Starlink satellites in the 340 kilometer to 360 kilometer range, according to the FCC filing. I was reading it was more like 328 kilometers to like 360, somewhere right around there. Let's call it like 330. I don't know right around there. To boost Starlink speed, SpaceX is asking for regulatory clearance to orbit some satellites about 200 kilometers, 124 miles closer to Earth. This is very important. I'll get into that in just a second. On Tuesday, the company filed a letter with the Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, about operating some second generation Starlink satellites between the 340 to 360 kilometers. If approved, SpaceX promises, quote, improve improve space sustainability and enhance the quality of service for consumers, enterprises, and first responders. Moreover, operating at these lower altitudes will enable SpaceX to provide higher quality, lower latency satellite service for customers, keeping pace with the growing demand of real-time applications to support remote work, distant education, telehealth, and emergency response, the company added. In December, 2022, the FCC gave SpaceX clearance to operate 7,500 second generation satellites along 525, 530, and 535 kilometer altitude, or within the same region as the first generation satellites. Basically, you're gonna keep them in the same area. Let's say 520 to like 550 kilometers. They're gonna stay there. That's what their approval was as of 2022. They're asking for an additional approval here to lower these satellites or additional satellites by 200 kilometers. Once again, that is a really big deal. The article finalizes with this. Still, the company's earlier plans also proposed operating some second generation satellites at the 340 to 360 kilometer range. Now they bring up this nice little chart here. And as you can see, there's two configurations. You have configuration one and configuration two. Now, the only thing that really changes here is there's slight altitude differences, but also the inclination of these satellites also change. Like for example, the 530 kilometers, they are changing from that 33 inclination or degrees to 38 degrees. So the positioning in the sky. 
Anyways, we could dig deeper into inclination and what it is all about in another video, but we're not gonna do it in this one. The company is now pressing the FCC to open up the lower orbital shell to Starlink. SpaceX is proud to report that the second generation satellites have performed even better than expected, including during the launch and early orbit phase of their operations where atmospheric drag on the satellites is at a maximum. So they did well, let's say, these second generation satellites that are up there, the version two minis, let's call them. Now remember the version two maxis will be coming soon when Starship doesn't blow up and goes around the planet a few dozen times and they end up doing all their testing, then finally we're going to see a lot more satellites, the bigger satellites, the Maxis, or we can call them the version three satellites. What's very interesting about this is last year I did a video and I talked about the Chinese copycat of SpaceX Starlink. And I think they called it StarNet. <laughs> I'm not joking. Starnet. So Starnet's supposed to have 13,000 satellites and then another portion of them, another 12 or 10,000, let's call it, let's say 25,000 satellites in totality, okay? Which will be a duplicate of Elon Musk's SpaceX Starlink or so they are trying to do. But what was very interesting is the location where they were going to place the satellites. Now, once again, I talked about this about six months ago or eight months ago or whatever. What's interesting is the Chinese said that they were going to place these satellites at about 330 kilometers. Sound familiar, right? Not where Elon Musk was at about 530 kilometers, right? At 330. And a lot of you guys wrote in and said, well, God, if they put 25,000 satellites below Elon Musk satellites, are they going to interfere with Elon Musk satellites? And the answer to that is no. From 200 kilometers away, those satellites would be like the grain of sand, okay? So it's not gonna interfere. But that being said, if they reverse their signal, not conspiracy here, if they reverse their signal and started pointing that signal upward instead of downward at the planet, they can interfere. Not that they would ever do that. They wouldn't do that. That's just, that's just craziness, right? Stop talking craziness, Joe. Anyways, getting into this whole closer satellites and why does it matter and what are the positives and negatives? What are the benefits? Now, let me give you the positives first. Number one, the first positive would be, of course, you're gonna get lower latency. Your signal is coming from a location that's closer to you. Just like your cell phone tower, for example. If you're closer to the cell phone tower, you're gonna get a greater signal. Okay, same thing holds true with space or with satellites. As they get closer, the signal gets better. The same thing happens with HughesNet and Viasat, right? The signal's not so good because they're so far away, 36,000 kilometers in comparison to currently 530 kilometers. So we're gonna see lower latency. Now, this is important because Elon Musk said that he wanted to get latency down to sub 20 milliseconds. The only way to do that is to get the satellites closer or reduce some of the latency that is happening from all of the hops on the ground. That is from the ground station to the pop or the point of presence, back to the satellites, back down, back to the ground, so on and so forth, okay? You could reduce that side of things, but the easier way to do it is just lower the satellites. Very simple. So if he was able to get the latency to sub 20 milliseconds, it would be like on par with a cable company, getting close to fiber. That would be amazing, absolutely amazing. Just think about HughesNet and Viasat. They're sitting at about six, seven, 800 milliseconds. Six, seven, 800 milliseconds, sometimes a thousand milliseconds. A thousand milliseconds is one second. That's the amount of latency. That's why no one wants it anymore because you have Starlink sitting with 20, 30, 40 milliseconds of latency. My personal latency is anywhere from about 28 to about 40. That's what I have currently. I wanna see it better, but with these satellites traveling lower, the latency is going to get better. And I do believe that he will be able to get sub 20 milliseconds. Now, besides the lower latency, we're also going to get faster speeds. Why? Because we have a stronger connection and we're all looking for faster speeds, right? Now, not everything is rosy here. There's always a negative to every positive because there has to be balance in the universe. If there isn't a balance, eventually the universe will find a balance. We know that. Anyways, so one of the negatives is there's going to be an increase of atmospheric drag. 
Now, the only way to fix that is you're going to have to add fuel into the units, into the satellites to be able to keep them there for the same amount of time. So for example, if you needed 10 pounds of fuel, let's say to keep a satellite in orbit for five years, if that orbit changes from 530 kilometers down to 330 kilometers, greater drag, you're going to end up needing maybe double the amount of fuel. So maybe you need 20 pounds of fuel to keep it there for five years. So SpaceX is going to have to do one or two things, either add fuel to the satellites or not add fuel and just understand that the lifespan of these satellites is going to be reduced. So instead of, let's say, a five year lifespan, you might get three years lifespan and then they will burn up in the atmosphere and they will be replaced. Chances are, at a three-year cycle, these things will be outdated after three years anyways. It probably doesn't matter. I seriously doubt they're going to add extra fuel. They will just simply understand that there's going to be a shorter lifespan. Hence, they'll just put more satellites up there. I don't think that will be a problem for SpaceX. Now, another downside is that these satellites will be moving at a faster speed. I've told you guys about this in the past. The satellites are moving in about, let's say, 17,000 miles per hour. Eh, what is it, 27, 26,000 kilometers, whatever. Do the math. Well, from 530 kilometers down to 330 kilometers, 200 kilometers closer, the speed would increase, eh, let's say, approximately five, 600 miles per hour. So they'll be traveling, let's call it 17,500 miles per hour much faster, right? What does that do? Well, that reduces the coverage area on the ground. Why is that? Well, the satellites are flying by quicker. They're only overhead for a shorter period of time. Does that make sense? So let's just do some math here. If there was, for example, 5,500 satellites in totality, and in the US, there is, let's say, 550 nodes. All right. Well, you would have to add nodes or you would have to add satellites. Well, how many satellites would you have to add? If you do the math, you end up with about adding 200 satellites just to equate to the same amount of ground coverage at that closer distance. You get it? I think it's about 196 satellites to be exact estimated. Let's call it 200. So to recap, Bringing satellites from 530 kilometers down to 330 kilometers, you would need 200 extra satellites to provide the same amount of coverage on the ground. Make sense? Bear in mind, that's just for the United States. The United States is what, 2% of the entire world? So you can imagine there's going to be a lot more satellites that would be required to be able to provide the exact same amount of coverage at that lower altitude. That makes sense, right? Look at it this way. This is another, I think, a good way to look at it. Think of it a magnifying glass, right? Some people are like, well, you're closer. Why are you getting a smaller amount of people, a small amount of coverage? Think of a magnifying glass when you're a kid, right? You take the magnifying glass and you're trying to burn an ant. You're trying to burn an ant, okay? Well, if you take that magnifying glass and you move it closer and closer to the ant, the beam gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter until finally it's on fire, the ant. The ant's getting a lot of data, faster data, quicker, much quicker, lower latency, right? But then if you take that magnifying glass and move it away from the ant, the beam becomes wider or it dissipates, right? And the ant doesn't catch on fire and you end up with higher latency, you get lower speeds, you follow me? So we want to burn the ant. And the only way to burn the ant is to get that magnifying glass of the satellites closer to Earth. Does it make sense? But in so doing, you're tightening up that cone, that instance where it is striking the planet. And that's why you need more satellites to be able to strike everywhere. You get that? <laughs> Anyways, guys, I know this kind of went down a little bit of a rabbit hole, but I just want to get you just to think about what is happening here and how important it is, how important it is for us, Starlink users and possibly Starlink users that are coming to us in the future. People that are looking at Starlink and saying, hey, is it getting better? Is it getting worse? The bottom line here is it's going to get better. Not only is it going to get better because SpaceX is going to be able to use Starship to put approximately like 2% 
200 satellites into orbit at a time instead of 20, a full order of magnitude more, number one. But then also those satellites are going to be the maxi satellites or the version threes that are going to provide like 4x the amount of capacity. So it's just going to be exponentially better. All right. That's number one. Number two, by lowering the satellites closer to Earth, we're going to get lower latency. We're going to see Elon Musk's vision of sub 20 milliseconds latency. And then you and I that play first person shooters, we won't be dead all the time and not even know it because someone killed us because they're playing on a fiber connection with one milliseconds and we're sitting there at 45 milliseconds. We got shot and we didn't even know it. <laughs> and the guy on fiber is like, did that guy even see me coming around the corner? And the guy on SpaceX said, no, I didn't see you. And the guy on Usenet or Viasat is like, were you there like a second ago? I don't know. <laughs> Just dump Usenet and Viasat. They're going out of business. If you guys know it or not, they won't be there very long. I've said this many, many times. Anyways, I digress. If you enjoy this video, even in the least, as I said, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Don't forget my merch and my tees and everything else. Pick something up. I would appreciate it. Finally, many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.